In this week's Planet Korea, we pick up our occasional series on Korean urbanism with Colin Marshall. Colin is the local blogger for the Los Angeles Times Review of Books and an all-around prolific podcaster and writer on the topic of urban life in cities around the world. He's been with Koreascape for quite some time now, and every time I meet up with him, we head somewhere in Seoul and check it out. It's always fun, and I always learn something. This week, we're hopping a brand new kind of train in northeastern Seoul. There are no advertisements, and there's no driver, but there's a whole lot of culture, including a big bowl of free poetry. Have a listen. Colin, this is one of those segments where we're going to have to apologize right from the outset to listeners for background noise and crowd noise and stuff going on you know, all around us because we are in a very busy spot. We are, and I think any listener who lives in Seoul knows these noises we're hearing, right? <laughs> Every day they hear them. We're in the subway, but we're not in your usual Line 1 type of subway. We're in a sort of a cultural experiment of a subway that you only recently introduced me to. And it's brand new. It just opened in September. It is the Ui Shinsol Line. It's a light rail line, Korea's first light rail subway. All underground, a very good type of train to be recording on in the winter right now. We can stay underground. If we face the way we're facing, we see where all these sounds are coming from. The turnstiles beeping with a lot of busy entrances and exits. If we turn around, we're suddenly in an art gallery. Yeah, uh, we've got the usual crowds. Everybody's passing by in their long padding jackets. But I'm noticing there's not a lot of the usual sights you might see in a subway. There are, however, framed paintings and some explanations as if we were in a museum. Right, we're in an exhibition. This station, uh, we're in Shinsol Dongyok, which is also a station for the Line 1 and Line 2, the old subway lines, and maybe some other lines as well. But it's connected to this, where it connects to this brand new uh, Ui Shinsol Dong line, it's an art gallery, and right now displaying the works of uh, Chon Gyeong Ja, who was a painter, was a painter, I should say. She passed away in 2015, just not too long ago. But uh, she lived to her 80s or so. She had uh, one of these storied and difficult Korean lives you can read about in the explainer text, if you can read Korean there. But the paintings they've chosen to put up from her are all of scenes from around the world. They're of world travel. First up, the Grand Canyon, very popular Korean destination. Then Broadway in New York with all the musicals. You can see Les Miserables there. Uh, Colette the Waif staring out at you from this painting. Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Other continents as well. Africa you see over there. South America. We see desert desert landscapes, we see mountains. It's uh, the world travel she did in her life represented in paintings, characteristic to her style. Here, as you cross from the commuter lines, line one and two, to this brand new line, this uh -huh. brand new light rail line, this cultural light rail line they're calling it. Why merge art and culture into the rail? Do you have any idea what uh, prompted the, the government to start this thing? Well, it's where it's like where do you go next? You can think of you think of the cities of the future you've seen in movies. And sometimes you get the ad-filled dystopias, but more often than not, it's a vision of an it's the Star Trek style anti-commercial future. And this is a stark contrast to some of the existing rail lines in Korea where for example, I was reading recently, listeners may have heard on all subway lines the city of Seoul is planning to remove all plastic surgery ads I heard by about 2022. That. Some lines have them gone. But can you imagine down in Gangnam, uh, you're on line, what is it, line three or six? One, I think maybe it's Well, six. if you get Apkujong Station. Yeah, yes, I'm on line three. That's all you see. That's all you see. Yes. The whole station is really plastic surgery. It, that right. is no exaggeration. And this line, the Ui Shinso line, has no commercial ads of any kind. That's just the rules of the, of the line. Uh, run by a company called Ui, which is a subsidiary, I believe, of POSCO, the steel manufacturer. But no commercial ads, only ads for cultural events, and only art, as we're seeing right here with certain stations like this one, dedicated to being art stations. It's a new concept, and I dare say I hope it catches on. You want to take a train ride? Let's get on. Colin, uh, I'm mildly unnerved and excited at the same time because you and I are in the very foremost front car of the train and I'm seeing for the very first time out the windshield of a subway train. You're seeing what would be a privileged perspective on a regular line. You're, we're, we're where the driver would be, but you'll notice there's no driver here. There's no driver whatsoever on this. 
This is a driverless metro line, the first, I believe, a real driverless metro line in Korea. And it's reminiscent of, I'm trying to think of where else in the world I've been on one of these, the Docklands Light Railway in London. There's that. Have you been on that? I have not. That's, that, that's all that comes to mind. This is still pretty futuristic in a way. Mm. We're still accustomed to seeing drivers up front guiding the terrain. And as I mentioned before, we'll hear announcements in the background and stuff like that. Um, it's just part of the deal when you're on a train. Ooh, and I can, I can see the other train about to pass us by. Ooh, it's very, very short exciting. trains. These are short trains. The scale is smaller. They actually call this, I believe, the komachon, or the kid train. It's like a kid <laughs> brother of some of the longer lines, the bigger lines. It feels a lot like a monorail type of thing, like you might have at an amusement park or at uh, the airport to yeah, get from one terminal to another. Like Incheon Airport, every time I go there, I'm riding something similar to this. Colin, I don't know whether I'm convincing myself of this or whether it's actually true, but did that... The sound quality and the feeling of being in that, on that train, maybe it's because it's new. Was it smoother and sort of more electric sounding than the usual sort of rumble and pull of uh, subway cars? It is hard to separate what's purely psychological from what's real, but I'm sure this represents a step forward in that yeah. technology. If you're going driverless, it's got to be... It's got to run smoothly. That's right. You, you don't have another option there. You don't want to have any variables that a non-existent driver would need to react to. And already up the escalator, we're standing in front of this... Uh, well, how do you describe it visually without people being actually here? We had an installation of multicolored blocks on the wall, like the tiles of the wall are emerging out at you, all the different all sort of at different levels of extrusion all in different colors mm. covered with people holding up what look like clovers and hearts uh, ah, those yes. types of symbols it's a it's a work of art by the name of binnanen kipum or as students of korean will know that it means uh, shining happiness shining happiness binnanen kipum so, trying to bring some bring some binnanen kipum to the commuter's <laughs> day <laughs> by it's an by artist an, Go ahead. Imi Suk. Is that Imi right? Suk, yes. yes. Made just this year, 2017. It's awfully cheerful. It reminds me of those, um, you know, the, the almost the cartoon character of the person holding a heart above their head? I do, yes. Uh, that's, that, maybe that's what inspired it. But it's in many pretty colors, pink, green, yellow, orange. And, uh, yeah, it's cheerful. And it makes you feel cheerful. Look around us, we can see there's a sort of a commitment to making the station colorful. There's installations going in. We look around the corner. We look up to the staircase. There's more color going in, more art, more effort still ongoing, even though the train is running, to convert this station into a, an aesthetic space, shall we say. Yeah, I, it, it looks like a group of young uh, people over here. Possibly they are artists, possibly they are art students or something actively putting together some kind of installation. Yeah, my name is Han Su Jung. I'm an artist and uh, I've got the offer to make uh, this uh, installation in uh, this, uh, this line. Right now it um, seems like just a framework. What is it going to be when it's done? Uh, actually this is the they make it the star zone. So we are making an, another star wall to make uh, some someone want to be feeling more star, star uh, <laughs> joining here and then they sort of like a star experience kind yeah, of thing yeah star experience if someone visited here and then they make some note and then some attached some stars on the wall and then there's a, there'll be some wishes or some their hope to be next year or the for the christmas mm -hmm. So it's like an interactive thing. You can contribute a message or a note or something. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever put art in a subway station before? This is first time to make an installation in subway, but I, I still, I have the work to a lot of the uh, in uh, outside mm. uh, in Seoul, Seoul area. Mm. So this is first time, uh, but this is very tough uh. work because there, there's a lot of people working inside here and right. then they walk around and they touch. We have to make it very safely. Uh. So we've decided to uh, get out at one of the stations, or at least to go to the second level of one of our first stations. Right, here in Songshin Women's University Station. There we go. And uh, again, I will emphasize, nothing to the effect of what kind of mobile phone to buy, no consumer products, all of the posters on the wall are stuff you can go to. Cultural events, music, concerts... 
Looks like a bunch of concerts on uh, on offer here. Exactly. Festivals, Christmas concerts, tis the season, yeah. after all. And this is the place you can see their posters put up. You, yeah, As you say, you won't see anything about Samsung. Mm. You won't see anything about... Uh, well, can we use the phrase Samsung? Don't use brands. Okay. Say about, uh, you know, products or whatever. You're right. You won't see anything about products. You won't see anything about even services. But you will see events. You will see concerts. You will see things cultural. Stuff to experience. Let's walk over here. I saw something coming up the escalator. Um, it's, I don't know, it reminds me of some sort of Austin Powers uh, or possibly Clockwork Orange um, assortment of just random patterns. There's red stripes, blue stripes, black diamonds, red coils, uh, just a whole bunch of geometric uh, kind of playing with shapes. Exactly. It's, in fact, the work of art you see as you go down the escalator or the stairs here, after you transfer from the Lion 4, has the word pattern in its name. It's called, and I have the information up here, uh, Set V9 Peton. It's by an artist by the name of... Uh, it's, it's, it's by an artist by the name of... Kim Yong-na, who won a prize, uh, a prize called, if you translate it, the Young Artist of Today from the Ministry of Sports, Culture, and Tourism a few years ago. And now her work is adorning this second art station on the Ui Shinso line. So we were at the first, we saw one artist, the work of one artist of an older generation. Uh -huh. Now here's a much newer generation artist represented just, just a little bit more north on the line. In a way, it's the best kind of museum because you've got a captive audience. Nobody's paid anything for the art per se. But a lot of them are, uh, you know, on this sort of short attention span journey. I think they're happy to be entertained by colors and things like that on the wall. It's the kind of thing you'd want to see or the kind of thing that won't at least bother you to see mm. when you're on the train, when you're commuting, when you're transferring. You transfer a bunch of times eventually, so the theory goes, you might get more curious about what it is you're seeing. You might look into it. That's right. You're going to reach an audience that otherwise might not even think about art. It's the definition of public art in a way. Colin, you know, being on a rail line like this, that's, you know, uh, yet another way that the uh, government is trying to make rail travel modern and cool and relevant. It makes me kind of lament the state of train travel in the United States where we're from. Uh, I was, yeah, I was just thinking, you watch this monitor, it shows us where the next train is, when it's going to get to us, not just <laughs> when, but where. And I'm thinking, just before you started talking... Boy, I'm going to miss that when I'm traveling in the U.S. That's right. When you're waiting at Penn Station and hoping the train comes within maybe another three hours. Yeah, but ain't no one going to tell you. Might be four. <laughs> no one knows. That's why. Uh, I guess, you know, on the one hand, we have greater distances to cover and the economics are different. But I would really like to see some kind of metropolitan effort, you know? It's true. And the first step might be to get some of the people in charge in the U.S. to visit here, right a line like this. Excellent idea. Colin, it's my first time at uh, Solsem Station, one of the art stations on the line. And uh, we've gotten out, and there's this fascinating bowl of little scrolls on it. It says uh, Hangari. So it's Shi Hangari. What's that all about? So a hangari is people who live in Korea or no Korean culture will know. is like a pot. Usually you fill a hangari with kimchi. Okay. In this case, it's full of shi. Or if you see the hanja, the Chinese character, if you can read that, it's poetry. Shi, of course, in Korean. And it's full of little squirrels. We just, just saw a lady pushing a stroller, getting off the train. Take one. She's opening it up now. But that's what you do with it. <laughs> it says here in Korean, to translate roughly, you've got a busy, you've got a hard life. So for some consolation, you can take a poem with you and please only take one per person it says <laughs> don't scoop like you know in Halloween there would always be the kids who if there was an unoccupied house with a bowl of candy out they just dump it into their <laughs> pillowcase don't dump don't the do poetry that. come yeah. on I, I trust the public and soul not to do that but yeah it's just to give you a moment of uplift it's a little like another transit project everyone in Seoul has seen you've seen it many times I know the poems on the screen doors uh -huh. put on the screen doors in plastic lettering poems from all eras new and old all different kinds 
kinds of poems, some of them even foreign, translated into Korean. This is another aspect of that whole project, to bring poetry uh, to the subway. Two things you think might clash, you know, this busy commute, uh, the stressful nature, the much discussed stressful nature, stressful nature of Korean life, combined with the poem, which, if you've looked into Korean literature at all, is always brought up as the essential unit of Korean literature. It all comes back to the poem, not the novel, but the poem. I was quite surprised to find that some of the best sellers, the absolute top sellers for 2017 in Korea, are books of poems. What is it? It's it is. called... Um, the temperature of language, something uh, ondo, something, yeah, yeah, yeah. I live in Shincheon, and there is there are ads for a, po- a publisher of poetry, collections of poetry, big ads in the subway. They've always been there. Can you imagine that in New York? Can yeah. you imagine that in Los Angeles? No, I'm afraid. No, you there's cannot. almost a slightly ridiculing attitude towards poetry, even within publishing. And there we have another another <laughs> poem taken. I'm another happy t- take one of my own. I think. 여러분들의 healing을 위한. That is uh, for our healing. You got one. I got one. Let's just take one. We won't be greedy. And it says here, the I uh, the, has the I soul you logo. I gomawo you. I, I thank, thank you. you. <laughs> that works. I like it. <laughs> we'll open it in a little while. Let's walk over here. There's um, sort of a vending machine type of deal, but a little little bit more advanced. They look like a very advanced futuristic vending machines. There are two here. As you can see, they have a logo. Of the open of an open book, these are machines to take out and return books from the library. This is an integration of one public facility with another. Libraries with subways with the subway. It makes a natural sort of sense, doesn't it? 도서자가 가 반납기. Is that what that says? Uh, it's like a return your reading material. Uh, uh, uh. A machine to return your reading material. Yeah. So yeah, uh, just return, or could you electronically book? Uh, a book to show up at this thing and you could we can go around the corner and see where you pick those books up I don't know if you ever went to an automat Kurt but if you <laughs> recall what an automat is there's windows of food and you choose like the cake behind one door and the hamburger behind the other door well this is like an automat with books you can see the numbered clear doors you can have a book delivered here you can come to pick it up with your library card when you're done just drop it off in the box around the corner here in Sorsim Station one is the Dechulgi, where you lend out the books, you pick up your book that you ordered online, presumably. And the other one is the Pannapgi, where you can just drop it in and somebody from the library will take care of the rest. Very convenient. Mm. Well, Colin, we have emerged from the Ui cultural line at the end station, Pukansan Ui. We have emerged from the only all underground uh, light rail line in Korea, the very first light rail subway in Korea, the cultural line that is the Ui Shinsol line. And of course, it's named that because you start in Shinsol Dong and we end here in Ui Dong, where I've never actually been before. This is new for me. We're right near Bukansan, the famous uh, Bukan mountain. Uh-huh. And uh, it feels like we're pretty far away from Seoul, actually. Really you know, far. Like, it feels like we're in the in the Tibang, we're up in the provinces, but it's been made a lot closer by the advent of this rail line. We've got one more thing to do, and that is open the poem. It's got a nice little I come up you. I come up da you. I come up woe you. Man, man. <laughs> All right, what is your poem du jour? It's a little bit long, but why don't you read just like the first verse and see what we got? It's called Dulkot by Ihija. Ah. Uh-huh. 둘길 걷다가 꽃을 보면 그 나무로 종교 걸음 멈춘다. 아, 누군가라도 반기는 소박한 종 어머니 모습이다. Has anybody ever told you, Colin, that you sound a little bit Japanese when you uh, speak and read Korean? Only 45 million of the 50 million people in South Korea have informed me of that. Because <laughs> you did study Japanese, right? <laughs> yeah, I still do, in fact. But, you know, my number one foreign language will always be Hangugo. <laughs> I was in a class with a lot of uh, Japanese people, and they sounded a lot like Carlin Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to pitch this program to you on Koreascape. Uh, Japanese inflected Korean poetry corner with Colin Marshall. Mull it over. <laughs> That's your segment. Next season, I'm going to lobby for it's that. Because I'm in a cultural mind from this rail line. What can I say? It put me in the right mood. <laughs> I'm getting cold. Can we get back on the train? Let's do it. All right. <laughs>